blowing it. Did that stop robbery? No. no. But did we give up trying to enforce it? No. We still try to invoke it when we can. So I, I say the same thing here, but I also, as I said earlier, I believe there's enough honest people in there. You give them the right paperwork, you'll get hidden support. There was a woman one time, in this one case, she went all over the LA court in downtown Los Angeles looking for her case. It was missing from the clerk's records. Nobody knew where it was. She spent the entire day hunting for that case, and near the end of the, the day, she found it. It was on the judge's desk. She didn't go in there, but somebody went and looked. They found it. And that was illegal on the part of the judge, because that was supposed to be in the custody of the uh, clerk. At the end of the day, she was out. She was walking down through the aisle, and the employees were coming out. They were all in the aisles. And there was this little clutch of women that were talking. They were clerks. And they were talking among themselves. And as she walked along, one of the women separated from that group and went over and said, are you Mrs. So-and-so? And she said, yes, I am. She says, I just want you to know how much we appreciate what you are doing. And then she went back. You see, that clerk couldn't openly help her. But behind the scenes, there is support. Okay? In another case, uh, I, I suggest you be very friendly toward these people. You never know who your friends will be. Now, this is practicality, not law. Okay? Huh? They're human. They're human, yes. Yes, they, they may not understand it. You know, they operate in ignorance too. They got their routines to follow. They think they're right. But here's what happened. This actually happened. This woman, I had told her, always be friendly with everybody. So anyway, she went down to the court and she was always friendly with the clerks, always told jokes, traded personal stories, you know, how are the kids kind of thing. And over time, she developed a rapport with the clerk. One day she went in the clerk and the clerk, she had an order. I don't know, if against the judge or something. The clerk said, I can't file that. Well, why not? Well, she says, I, just, I can't, it's not proper. So she was ready. She said, well, here's a court order ordering you to file it. Okay, she was prepared. The clerk said, well, that's not a proper court order. She says, you know, if, if you're, and they were friendly, okay. There was no animosity whatsoever between these two. They were just talking and trying to mutually solve a problem. And she argued for four hours with that clerk going back and forth, saying she had the authority and the clerk saying no. And the clerk told her, look, if you want me to actually do something, your only recourse is to go up to the appellate court and get a court order from them telling me to do it and then I'll file it. So she was kind of at a dead, you know, kind of dead in the water at that point. So she went home at noon, called me on the phone, and we discussed it, okay? And I said, well, we're going to have to think our way through this one, what to do. So that, was, that happened on a Friday. Saturday morning, she went back in the days when they had Saturday delivery at residences, you know, she received a letter from the clerk. The clerk invited her to bring the papers down and she would file them. And she pointed out that section 1368 or 26, 1326 I think it is, of the United States Code, Title 28, the civil, civil code, okay? Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. It was that particular code that said that the, uh, that the, the district court, the United States District Court had original jurisdiction where over a clerk or any federal employee to order that employee to perform a duty owed to the plaintiff. Well, what happened to the defendant? The statute specifically addresses the plaintiff. Well, what happened is this. The plaintiff owns the court. The clerks are the plaintiff's employees. Okay? 
A court is defined as the person in suit of the sovereign. The defendant is an outsider. If the defendant has a beef with the employee of the court, he's got to go up a level higher to get the order to order the lower court to do the job. But when you're the plaintiff, you own it and you have direct. Well, we never dreamed that section was there. We knew we were right in principle. And it was the clerk that found it for us. Okay? Boy, was that a real gold mine. So, never underestimate the power of your adversary to be your friend. Okay? Be nice to these people. There was a... Uh, uh, in Thailand, I believe it was. You remember... Some of you people remember these Buddhist monks that were dousing themselves in kerosene and setting themselves on fire. Had quite an impact on the government and international rules. So what happened, you see in Thailand, it was real simple how they solved problems. If you were a problem to the government, you disappeared at midnight. No problem. Okay? Well, here's this. These, these Buddhist monks were causing all kinds of trouble internationally. And everybody knew who was responsible for these Buddhists doing this. It was their leader. He was encouraging his people to do it. And everybody knew it. And this guy went around the country with a minimum protection. And nobody touched him. Nobody heard him. And it was the wonder of the reporters of that area, the newspaper reporters, you know, and TV and so forth. Why didn't this guy disappear at midnight? That's what happened to everybody else that was that troublesome. Well, the reason was very simple. Everybody liked him. <laughs> the guy was just simply so likable, even his enemies loved him. Oh, he was a pain in the neck, but they didn't want to hurt their buddy. <laughs> you know, he's a, he's a nice guy. <laughs> and that's how he survived. So, be sure when you're not conducting court business, you know the minute you turn your back, your adversary would love to stab you. Okay, you know that. They'll pull every trick. I've had an attorney call down and take the, claiming to be me, and take, the, uh, uh, take my motion off calendar. And then I show up and the judge isn't prepared or anything else. Okay, they do all kinds of dirty tricks. They use wrong case numbers. Anytime you get a paper from somebody, check it carefully. That case number might be different. Okay, so what I've found was that be nice to everybody, your buddy. I had one attorney screaming at me in, in the San Diego, uh, not San Diego, in Orange County Courthouse in Santa Ana. I heard the echoes bouncing off the end of the, the wall at the end of the hallway, okay? He was yelling at me. He was really out of control, and I was nice to him. <laughs> of course, that made him matter. But generally, you're nice to these people. So I just want to tell you that, that always be nice, even to your enemy. You'd be surprised what will get you. Um, let's see. Well, that kind of is a big summary of uh, what I would like to say. Um, let's see. Uh, is there any quickie here? Yeah, I guess. Oh, well, notice and demand or uh, notice and uh, request. I'm changing my uh, view on that. It says notice and demand there, but I think it should be a notice and request. Because what are you doing? You're trying to get a contract with somebody. Somebody, a demand means that by right, somebody owes you something, by your right. And you have a right to demand it. But that's not too polite. If you say notice and request, remember titles do not affect the body. In the body, you still say what you want, and that's what counts. So you do that. Um, okay. Hit me with some questions. Oh, you want to hear about the Sure. Okay. First of all, I am a jailbird. Oh, boy. I like jailbirds. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I've been arrested and thrown out public meetings over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that when I've always believed that truth plus law plus common sense equals justice for all. 
I don't care if you come from the moon. I don't care if you come from anywhere mm -hmm. and whatever galaxy. But what's your question? But the thing of it is, mm -hmm. we have a pedophile judge in San Bernardino County. Do you have the facts? Yes. Then, then sue him. Uh, no, uh, he, he is still in office. And he's been laundering quite a bit of property for the powers that be. So well, so a lot of people have written to the Judicial Commission. Mm -hmm. This is how could this be? Sure. The Judicial Commission actually sent me a letter stating that, yes, he erased his own evidence. Mm -hmm. And that he, because he wasn't brought to a higher court mm -hmm. and condemned, even though he had uh, uh, molested other children in Ontario, sure. that... Uh, He's still a judge. Well, get those, you get those people to file a suit. Look, it isn't what you do, it's what people complain about that counts. You know, if you're just going to uh, talk about it without any muscle behind it, well, nothing's going to happen. You've got to get the victim to make the... The victim file the, is now 24, has had his bro, uh, job. Well, then he's a big boy now. He, he has been raped in jail. From sure. the time he was 14, the, sure. the judge has used him. Sure, okay, that happens. So what you have to do is you've got to get him to file a lawsuit. Now, if he's in jail and he can't handle it for himself, then what you can do with your sovereign capacity is you can go for habeas corpus. You can file a habeas corpus in the name of another. That's in the procedure. What they've done is put a gag order on the family and any time that he speaks of it, they put him back in jail. Sure. And this is yeah, but that, that gag order does not apply to lawsuits. That gag order applies to the family as well as to the victim. Then that what they have to do is appeal that order or file an original lawsuit, which means they'd have to learn common law and so forth. Look, the, the law does not protect he who slumbers on his rights. And it doesn't count. It doesn't count. There's no buts. Many of the judges are family related. Yes. And they do have incestuous relationships. Yes. In the courts. Yes, but who's complaining? And I mean complaining, legally complaining. It doesn't, you can't just talk about it. You've got to actually put some muscle behind it. Or take it to a grand jury and have the grand jury make a presentment. They have their people in the grand jury. I'm sure they do. Yeah, if you've ever watched the procedures. Which, by the way, let me mention something about grand juries. You know, look, if you, there's a difference between morality and law. Okay, and obviously there's power there that's being abused. Obviously there's power being used to protect the judges themselves from their own criminal acts. So you have to go outside that system. Maybe it calls for a federal type thing and sometimes they're in bed with each other too. So, you know, I, I'm not saying it's a perfect system. Sometimes you have to just say, well, I can't fix that problem, move on to one you can fix. You know, you, can't, you cannot change the ship of state. What you can do is affect it by degrees. See, a, you, a big ship does not suddenly turn. It goes half a degree at a time, slowly, and ends up in a new direction. That's what we're doing here. You know, if a robber has you in the alley, he's got a gun on your, in your ribs, and he says, give me your money, you give it to him. And, and you're, he's wrong. You don't stand there and say it's against the law, his mother won't approve, and so on. You've got to, but what you do is once you let go, once he lets you go, then you move heaven and earth to gr try and get even. But if you can't find the power to do that, sometimes you just have bad luck. The, as Kennedy said, life is unfair. Yes, sir. Wouldn't it be possible that uh, one way to operate would be to file a civil RICO? A federal lawsuit? Well, you have to be the injured party if you're going to file right, you're a civil. About the, you're about the injured party. Filing. Yeah, sure, sure. So that seems but you can also, if he's in jail because of something, you could now bring it up habeas corpus in his behalf. That it, you see, you cannot sue in the name of another except in habeas corpus. Habeas corpus, you can. Well, speaking of uh, habeas corpus, uh, I understand that with the uh, USA Patriot Act, that 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 now is in limbo. Well, that, that may be true of the civil law system, but the common law has not been suspended by the Patriot Act. 
Okay. Okay. Have because you, you're outside the Constitution. So have you ever challenged any of the uh, U.S. Patriot Act uh, no. activities? No. No. It's too know? new. I haven't been involved. I haven't seen any cases on it. Well, I saw that it was on front page of the paper here just last week, I believe it was, in yeah. the last 10 days, that uh, some judge finally said this business clause is unconstitutional. Oh, it's great. Great. Somebody challenged it. One me. Right. So <laughs> uh, how about, uh, you mentioned the uh, license plates, and if you have a license plate, of course, you're... Sure. Well, you know only a car. Yeah, you have a federal tax stamp, and, right. and, and a, the very meaning of the license means that the owner is granting permission to you, use, to you to use his property. So is that the way you operate, or do you Yeah, I have, I have a, a car with license plate and so forth. Just as a practical consideration, I'm involved in a lot of things, and I haven't taken the time to properly deal with that issue. So I took the easy way out. I went ahead and got it and so forth. And how about your driver's license? Same deal, but it's without prejudice. Both of them are without prejudice. If I ever get a ticket, I think I can deal with it. All right. If I choose to. I might choose to pay it because it's small potatoes compared to some real big issues I'm involved in with other people's cases. Right. Well, so, speaking of the UCC and uh, yeah. you know, operating outside of the uh, driver's license, I have just written on here in manual, just cursive, I'm a traveler slash sojourner, not a driver in UCC 1-207, which, of course, you're familiar with. Uh, two days ago, I was stopped uh, by a cop in a parking lot uh, mm -hmm. in a shopping center over by USC. Sure. And uh, he he wanted to see my driver's license. Sure. And I showed this to him. And I said, you know, I've, I've operated this way now for the last 12 years in, in four states. I've never gotten a ticket for this. Mm -hmm. I want to put him on notice. In fact, if he was going to challenge that and give me a ticket, he was, you know, to be yeah. have some repercussions from it. And he, they checked it out, they called in about it, and they let me go. Well, apparently you're on the records as being somebody to leave alone. Well, yes. Which is good. Right. And, I, of course, I've gone to court before. Yeah. You know, so what's your question? So my question is, uh, have you dealt with people who have operated this way here? Uh, have you ever helped them? Deal with, uh, this Not with these issues. I've stayed away from driver's license issues because they, I had bigger things to deal with, right. people in jail, you know, and stuff like that. But, yeah. Thanks. But, you know, here's what I would do. If you really want to do it right, look, I suggest that as a policy, okay, just as a general way to do things, I don't think you should fight a traffic ticket. I think what you should do, if you get a traffic ticket, go down and pay it their bail, you know, but pay it and be sure to sign it without prejudice. Now that gets them off your back. Now if this really is an issue with you, then sue them. Because, but now you're the attacker. Okay? You signed without prejudice, you gave up nothing, you have all rights to sue them, and they have no justification to get out and go after you because they got the money, the thing that they were after. So now you sue them. But what you could do before you even get a traffic ticket, you could get a driver's license so that you, know, you avoid the hassle on the street. But then, let's say you really, that is important to you and you want to follow through. What I would do is I would shoot for a declaratory judgment. But I would do it on my terms. In other words, I'd create a, a lawsuit this lawsuit, in my sovereign capacity, I'm suing the state. Well, background first. I'd write the state and say to the state, what would you do to me if I didn't get a driver's license and you caught me on the street traveling? Okay? They will write back and say, we're going to do you some harm. We'll put you in jail or whatever. Now you have a justiciable issue. Now you go to court. There's a disagreement. You haven't done it yet, but there's a disagreement. You say, what would happen? They say they do this. Well, you object to that. So now you go to court and you get a declaratory judgment, and it's your court because you're the plaintiff, and you're the one who's sitting there. And then once you make that judgment, you now order the state of California to update their records, which say that you are not subject to their jurisdiction. And then when the cop stops you, looks up that driver's license number, and, it says, and they tell him to leave you alone, he will. He'll respect their word. So that's the technique I suggest. It's much better to be the attacker than the defender. Great. Thank you. And you don't give up that right. Yes, ma'am. What do you mean by the state? California. The, the DMV? 
DMV or the Secretary of State? No, no, California. The, the DMV. Whoever you're dealing with. The cop, if you want. If you're asking for a Come on over to the mic. You want to know, who do I mean by the state, right? Who do you mean by the state that well, writes to, to ask uh, if, if he's required to have a driver's license? Well, I'd write Department of Motor Vehicles on that one then, sure. Because that's the one who prosecutes you. Sure. It's the DMV. Yeah, well, sort of. Yeah, it's the district attorney, actually. But, but yeah, that's what I do, DMV. They're the ones that issue the Sure, licenses. sure. Right. Right. Okay, yes. Uh, Mr. Kerr, can you just give out your website one more time? Sure, the website is with or without the www, doesn't matter. But you put in 1215.org, and that gets you to the website. Yes, sir. Yes, um, uh, my girlfriend would go to her daughter's, and the daughter either is that's irrelevant, but we got a cell phone so I could talk to her daughter's. That was AT&T cell phone, and... Uh, but they have been trying to be God's own and I don't like having a God over me. Okay, um, that happens. Okay, it was supposed to be $46 the first month, which we paid. The second month, it was 104 The third month, they charged us 171 Do you have a contract? Unfortunately, yes. I have never had a... No, 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 no. Do, do, you have a, do you have a contract that I specifies... Have a contract. No, d does the contract specify those terms that you just told me? I don't know. I didn't. Well, you got to read the contract. That's all in the contract. Well, if it's not in the contract, then. I'm going to call the FCC on them. Now, well, look, the contract. The, I'll bet you that. Well, I won't bet you, but I'm certain that in that contract it's going to say something to the effect that all verbal agreements are cast out, and that they, that this contract is the sum total of the agreement. Check your contract. You got to read. I asked them five times. Guy. Don't ask. Read the contract. You'll make your own decision. This is fiduciary when someone tells you verbally. No. Read the contract. They're not authorized to alter the contract. Doesn't matter what they tell you. Read the contract. Don't avoid your job. Read the contract. It's a contract question, a contract problem. You've got to read it. And that controls. If so, uh, you're talking about some judges, other people were talking about some judges. Sure. Are friends with other judges. Or well, that happens. Sure. That doesn't happen to me. I have a cousin. He's a high pressure lawyer. Well, okay, that's fine. He me off to my aunt's will okay. And sure. Well, then you. Oh, no. I'm still nice to him. There. He still screams at you. Yeah, but he was that way. When well, he was then. Six years old, and I was seven. Well, then open up your common law court and go after him. That's really what I want to do. Yeah, be kind of fun because he'll be in there not understanding it, and when you overrule him, he can't figure out how or why. Anyway, we, uh, in 98, my aunt died, and he did the will. Okay, but the bottom line is... I can't change that. Yes, you can. You can go sue him in court, and it's your court, unless he does a counterclaim, which I, he probably won't do. Yeah, I like him more. Well, okay, you got to get the emotion out of it. Okay, what can I... Yes, sir. I have a question. Does the plaintiff own the court... In yes. Or criminal cases. No. Well, the, in a in a criminal case, the plaintiff is the state. Sure, they own their court, but when you do the counterclaim, you're opening your court. You're now court against court, and you're the second court, and you're challenging jurisdiction, and they have to prove their jurisdiction to your court. If they prove it, well, then you say, okay, continue. But if they don't prove it, then you over you order dismissal or something, award damages for bothering you. Can I give you a specific situation? Well, I mean, that you, you described it. That's the general gist of it. Well, Go ahead, Tribe. I mean... Well, it, I was attacked by a guy twice. Was, by what? Before attacked me. Yeah. You're about 20 years younger than me. Sure. I used to figure it out. It was easy thinking. So uh -huh. things didn't quite work out the way he expected them to. Right. He screamed for his wife to get a gun. Sure. So they came out and arrested him for assault and battery and terrorist threat. They dropped, without me being 
present. They dropped your salt and battery, which means I lost my ability to collect damages. So I complain. They reopen the case. Okay, this is a criminal case against him, right? Right. Okay, your status in a criminal case like that is a witness. That's it. You don't own the court. Not in that, not in that context. Okay. Like That's state thing. business. On the other hand, you may have a case against him because of the upset he caused you, injury, if any, bruises, whatever, you know, yeah, sue him. That's insane. That would, and that would be a common law case okay. in a court of record. Then you'd have fun. Thank you. His, he, he'll lose sleep. It'll, if nothing else, it'll cost him money to go hire an attorney because those kind of people generally don't educate themselves in law. Okay. But that's in the civil court, right? Sure. Okay. Well, the common law court. Common law. Yeah. How do I distinguish between that? How do I well, when you open it up, you say, I'm one of the people, and this is a court of record. Or in this court of record, I complain of such and such. Follow the example. Thank you. Okay, perfect. And then, if you ever want to take something to the grand jury, how do you find it? Ah, uh, grand jury. That's a whole separate area of discussion. Okay. Anybody want to hear about grand juries? Yeah. All right. If you want to hear about grand juries, I'll give you some ideas about grand juries. Okay. But I'll answer the next question until we got enough people listening about grand juries. Yes, ma'am. You had another question? Uh, I, I wanted to say that sure. the, the impound in my vehicle, uh -huh. the contract, why they took my vehicle was because I did not have a tag on my vehicle. Sure. So. I told DMV and Mike Chawla, I directed my mail to him, and I said, my contract with DMV has run out. Uh -huh. I do not have a contract with you. I have my CC1 taking me out of the public into the mm -hmm. private sector. I sure. have my UCC3 and I have a claim to the title. Okay, but see, yeah, right, right, right. But you see, the problem is, is that you're just talking to them or writing them or something like that. That's not legal process. No, I mean, I, I've gone after them. I'm going to, I am in federal you, court right now. Oh, okay. Okay, and they're trying to say, they're sure. trying to say that statutes and, and uh, codes right. still precede my rights, which is a lot of crap. Yeah, but you, but you see, they've, they've said that. Now what you do is you rule on the motion. If the if if the well you're you're you you violated one of the rules of good courtmanship, okay? Not really. Yes, really, because <clears throat> because the world think how the world looks at that. Nobody's going to believe that your case is worth ten million dollars. My rights and my vehicle were because they give me freedom. To you, to you. That's right. But you forgot the most important rule. I showed it to the officer when he came up. You still forgot the most important rule. I didn't say you're wrong. I just said you forgot an important rule. Okay? What is the definition of a court? The primary definition is a court is a place where you put on a show to convince the rest of the world that you're right. And I can tell you... Well, I'm just telling you what it is. What, what my experience is, if you, you're not passing... You're not passing the show test. You may be passing the legal test, but you're not passing the show test. And that's not, I know a guy who has a multi-billion judgment against uh, uh, one of the cities in Orange County, actually Riverside County, city of Corona. And you know what? He's not even close to collecting it. They all laugh at him. Okay? You gotta have more to your suit than just a judgment. They stole my vehicle. How easy can it be? $10 million worth? $10 million worth? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm convinced that you're convinced. I have a claim to the title. Great. Okay? I don't... Don't object to me. It's, I'm not the one to... Judges or whatever. You're not hearing me, are you? Well, they don't hear me either. That's right. Why is that? I said, sir, this is my document. Don't argue your case before me. I'm not the judge. Okay? I'm just telling you that I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that you haven't passed the show test. 
Well, that's very idealistic, but you haven't passed the show test. They stole my vehicle. Do you know what the show test is? Yeah, I have what? What is the show test? What's the show test? No, you you haven't passed my test. You haven't pa you, you haven't really got it. You're close, but that's not it. You've got to, you've got to convince the rest of the world that you're right, and you're not doing it. Well, you're right about that, but it's not you're not right about the ten million dollars. That's correct, but it's not worth ten million dollars in their minds. It worked. I don't see their Cadillacs working as good as my Honda. Did you collect the ten million? Not yet. That's right. I don't think you will. I don't think you will because you're not passing that test. See, if you'd said ten thousand, you might get it, but not ten million. Tell me, please, if I passed the test. Pardon? Uh, I, I didn't. I stopped registering my uh, 1991 right. automobile in 1995. Sure. It was uh, towed away because it was parked in a preferred parking area and it had no plate on it. Sure, okay, but um, what's the question? I was, uh, uh, the, the police, when I went to the department of the police department, they right. said I would have to register the car. That's so their rules, sure. To get my car sure, back. right. So what I did was I went to the Department of Motor Vehicles Right. I wrote a check. On the yeah. back of the check, I wrote that my automobile was confiscated and it was in bio, and, you know, without due process, sure. in violation of the Constitution of the United States of, okay. of, of 1787 and the Constitution. Why didn't you sue him instead? Pardon? Why didn't you just sue him? Okay. Well, then you. Anyway, I got my car back. They endorsed the check. Mm hmm. And I never got another registration after Okay. Did I do anything right? Well, yeah, it, is, it isn't wrong, but I, there's other things I would have done instead of that. But, you know, there's many different ways to handle a problem. I've driven the car with no license plate since 1995. Okay. Have you ever been stopped? No, I haven't. Okay, and well. And I don't have a driver's license either. Well, let's see the acid test is when you get stopped. What's the what's? Why don't you go down to the DMV and get a copy of your record? Maybe there's something on there that says leave you alone. Um, Check it out. I should do that. Yeah. However, the license is still registered in the system. The well, it'll always be there. It'll always be there. But there's no record of anything else. Okay. Well, great. I'm, but what's your question? <laughs> or it's just testimony. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I was wondering if uh, I have experience before. Uh, I've done a TV show for about uh, 15 years. Yeah, I get closer to the microphone. Okay, I did a TV show for about 17 years. And uh -huh. uh, one of the people on my show gave me some advice going forth. Uh -huh. I just wonder if you know this is an aberration, but I won real easy and it was just too easy. Uh -huh. What he told me, uh, I filed about 10 motions against a judge to accuse them all the time. Sure. And uh, he knew that I was trouble, so he closed out the court at the car uh -huh. scene, locked the uh, windows, sure. he threw everyone out, he threw my counsel out. Mm -hmm. I was me and him against. Right, back to common law here. Yeah, so um, he closed my case. I walked up to the swinging gates. Uh huh. And when I did that, I stopped real abruptly. Oh, short of the right. Yeah, I didn't go into the bar. Right. You promised so, uh, somebody else. I he asked me to come into the bar, and I said no. I'm here on a special appearance, not a judge appearance. Yeah. Parent, yeah. Outside jurisdiction. Sure. I denied his jurisdiction. I said I'm here to challenge your jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. He told me if I didn't come to the bar, it's issued bench warrant. I told him. Well, fine, I'm here, don't bother, just arrest me now. Mm -hmm. And you think you can. Mm -hmm. He got all upset sure. and, and threw me out of the court. You called his bluff, right. And that was the end of the case. Oh, great. There's more than one way to skin a cat, and he might have figured, wait a minute, I don't want to bother with this. I've met guys like me, you're, you're more headache than it's worth, and nobody was there to witness it. It's just you and him, so who knows what he wrote in the record to justify his action. But he just probably didn't want it, and it wasn't that serious a case. Now, if you'd been in there for murder, it might have been a different result. But, you know, these things happen. I've had cases unexplainably dismissed, too, even before I got involved in this. 
So I can't explain it, but I've heard that technique before, and apparently it worked in that case. I know of other cases where it didn't work. Now, the reason they didn't work is unknown to me. It may be ignorance of the judge, he just went ahead and did his thing anyway, or it could be that uh, he actually had a point. I don't, well, okay, well maybe, maybe uh, you got a valid technique and that judge knew it. If you had an ignorant judge, it might not have worked. Yeah. Okay, sure. So is that it? That's your question? Okay. I had, I had the same judge as him okay. a couple of years earlier. Sure. Uh, when I did have a driver's license, yeah. uh, I was stopped because I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Okay, that happens. There was a fine of $22. Yeah, protecting the state's property, right? Right. Okay. Um, I wrote a letter to the court uh -huh. uh, and sent them a public money office certificate. Yeah, that's a whole other technique, right. <laughs> I wouldn't use that in the common law, but yeah, you could do but, that. But I use that. Uh, that okay. It sure. Uh, it was good upon the declaration that somebody right. was in the United States within 90 days. Right. And I had my address on it. Okay. Anyway, right. I went to the court. Well, now, excuse me, but I'm, I want to answer questions. Are you making another testimony? Yeah. Okay. And it's a different area of law. It, it doesn't, the area I'm in is a different strategy. I'm not saying it doesn't work, and I've heard of the public uh, money order, or what, uh, I can't even remember what it's called, but, but I've heard of it, but that's not where I'm at. Okay. When they did that, I sent them a, um, a notice of dishonor. Sure. Is the guy behind you going to get a chance to ask his question? Yeah, because they dishonored my payment. Sure. So, uh, but I went down to the court anyway. And, uh, I made uh, right. an appearance in the court, a special appearance. Okay. The, court, the same judge is here, Larry, Gary Bind. All right. Now you're not letting the guy behind you ask his questions. You're continuing your testimony. And I told that I was there by special appearance. Uh, and sh I showed him the, all the papers that were sent to the court. Now how can I help you with all this testimony you're giving me? You're in a completely different area of law than what I'm talking about. Okay. I mean, it, it's, it can be valid. I'm not saying... He, he dismissed the case and said it was paid. Okay, great. Okay. Yes, sir. I had asked a question and gave him the answer, but I just couldn't write it down about when I get into a civil court, how do I just make sure that I can convert this into a mic court? Yeah, get closer to the mic. Um, you can adjust it. Yeah. It tilts. Sure. Uh, because I have retained an attorney for the civil case, I don't know what to do. Uh huh. Uh, and he doesn't seem to be moving forward with this. How yeah, well, you're, you're in the court's jurisdiction when you retain an attorney. And his first duty is to the court, his second duty is to you. Then I should probably just discharge this guy. Yeah, basically dump him. I mean, if he, but you're on your own then after that. So, you know, it's, it's, do you have the knowledge to handle it? Well, I suggest that if it's a serious case, that uh, you either educate yourself real fast or put yourself on the mercy of your attorney. But don't be in between. Well, I'm not sure that he's going to have to make the rest of the half. Well, that's right. You maybe fire him and get another attorney. But apparently it's not working for you the way you want. So, you, well, then maybe you better educate yourself. Okay. You know, you said the first thing to do though is just to counterclaim. Counterclaim, right? And then the second. It takes a lot. That's basically it. you counterclaim. Okay. But that's like good. another lawsuit, but then they have to answer it. That's what you do with lawsuits. Okay. And then you can reply to his answer. I see. And then he replies to your reply. It's got a different name. I forget what it is. Until at some point you're ready to go finish off the case. But again, that's a whole area. I just gave you highlights here. I haven't given you enough detail to really work at it. Well, this guy is a very aggressive guy. He's shown no reluctance to attack. Sure. He's indicated he will again. Yeah. And now I'm supposed to give my personal information to his attorney that you can give to this guy. Well, you know, sue the guy. I mean, if, if you you got a battle going, if he's going to be, if, if the guy is totally incorrigible and he's, he's an aggressor, well then, Rake him through the coals, then, if that's what he wants. 
the only problem I have is, is making sure that once this is over, I've severed his ability to connect with anybody. Well, you can't. I mean, you, you know, you always have to remember. You have to, you, well, you have to remember that you cannot outrun a bullet. Okay? That's true. So there's those considerations, too. You know, there's reality and there's theory. I know what you can do in theory, but uh, the reality sometimes is a little different. Okay, thank you. Let me answer, a, a deal with the grand jury question, since I dangled that and somebody showed some interest, unless we should cut off. You want to talk about? Okay, I, I'm going to talk about grand juries for a moment. This is, I think you'll find this kind of interesting. Okay. The first thing to understand about a grand jury is that we haven't had one for years. There, is, there are no grand juries anywhere in the United States, as far as I know, that are sponsored by the government. All of the grand juries that exist today are statutory grand juries. Now, I want you to notice something. No grand jury has more than 24 people on it. Typically, they have 21 or 23 people, but never more than 24. Okay? Why is that? Well, here's the reason why. When you go to the, Mag the Magna Carta, on the Magna Carta, Article 61, it defines a grand jury. Okay? So we'll go to, let's see, Foundation Magna Carta. <clears throat> if we go down to um, Article 61, it's a, it, Article 61 is a very long paragraph. Now, you know, you know that Magna Carta is common law, right? You know that. Because of uh, the Constitution of the United States and the state recognizes common law, okay? Since it recognizes common law, you can bring it in. Now, <clears throat> Article 61 says exactly what common law or what the uh, grand jury is. And you read down here, and it says something right here. Okay. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. Finding the beginning here. A little hard to find the beginning sometimes. Okay, basically the king, what the king is saying is that if the king himself or any of his minions bug you, a grand jury can take care of the problem. And here's, here's starting at the top. It says, Inasmuch for the sake of God and for the bettering of our realm and for the more ready healing of the discord which has arisen between us and our barons, we have made all these aforesaid con concessions. Okay, the king is conceding this, this stuff. Okay. It says, Wishing them to enjoy forever entire and firm stability, we make and grant to them the following security that the barons, namely, may elect at their pleasure 25 barons from the realm who ought with all their strength to observe, maintain, and cause to be observed the peace and privileges which we have granted to them and confirmed by this our present charter. In such wise, namely, that if we, our justice, or our bailiffs, or any one of our servants shall have transgressed against anyone in any respect, or shall have broken some one of the articles of peace or security, and our transgression shall have been shown to four barons of the aforesaid twenty-five, those four barons shall come to us, meaning the king, or if we are abroad to our justice, meaning their judges, okay, showing to us our error, and they shall ask us to cause that error to be amended without delay. And if we do not amend that error, or we being abroad, if our justice do not amend it within a term of 40 days from the time it was shown to us, or we being abroad to our justice, the aforesaid four barons shall refer the matter to the remainder of the 25 barons, 
And those 25 barons with the whole land in common shall distrain and oppress us in every way in their power, namely by taking our castles, lands, and possessions, and in every other way that they can, until amends shall have been made according to their judgment. Got that? All right. That's a long reading there, and I still didn't get through the whole paragraph. But what they're saying is, if you've got a problem with the king, in other words, the government, you can go to four of the members of the grand jury. Any four. Those four evaluate, and in their judgment, they go to the king, if they so decide, and tell the king, hey, we've got a problem here, it needs fixing. And the king has 40 days to fix it. Or if the king isn't in town, then he can go to the judges. you got 40 days to fix the problem, a month and 10 days, okay? And if he doesn't fix it in that time, those four can go to the whole body of grand jury. Now, there's got to be 25. You see why there's not 25 in our present-day grand juries? Because we're still common law. And 25 is a real grand jury. Okay, those, you go to, the four go to those 25. Those 25 are authorized to do anything they deem proper until the problem gets fixed. And later on it says they can do anything except they cannot put the king in jail and they cannot put his family in jail. But they can take all his property away from him. And not only that, later on it says in there that the king pre-authorizes anyone to assist the grand jury if the grand jury wants it, that assistance, okay? Now, <clears throat> that's common law. Now, the grand juries we have today, sure, they're called grand juries, but those are statutory grand juries. So I remember in Orange County one year, the grand jury criticized the data processing department, the computer department of Orange County. And I remember the, the uh, supervisor of the county saying, well, that's the grand jury's opinion, you know, but they really don't know what's going on and how this is supposed to work. I don't think he could have said that to a real grand jury. Now, I'll tell you an interesting provision in California statutes. You're going to love this one. Any grand jury can remove any elected officer from office. It just takes the 25 or 21. Even the, the, the statutory grand jury can do it. But you see, how did this grand jury come about? Now somebody commented a little while ago, well, they have their own people planted in the grand jury. Well, that's true. The interview, basically, when you apply for grand jury service, I've looked at the, the process. And you go through a set of interviews, they actually visit you at your home, and eventually they decide who's going to be in the grand jury pool. And then once they've pre-selected these grand jurors, they then draw randomly out and get 25, or I mean 21 in Orange County, okay? So that's how they select them. So basically, they, and it's the judges that do the initial selection. So you can see it's pretty biased. But you look at the procedure here. If we're talking common law, how does a grand jury form? Well, they elect from among themselves. There is no predefined procedure for how the election is run. They choose their own. Now think what it would be like if I could get round up 25 of you guys Educate yourself in this whole process. Form as a grand jury. And remember, a grand jury can be secret because this comes back from the old days when grand juries were in opposition to the king. And they didn't want to be identified who they were. Okay? So you don't have to say who's on your grand jury. But I have a suggestion on how it should work since it's a concept that has not been exercised anywhere in the United States and probably in the past hundred years. What I think we should do is assemble 25, make it a grand jury, establish yourself officially, go down to the 
court administrator. He's the guy who schedules the courtrooms, okay? And he has other responsibilities. Sometimes in some jurisdictions, he's also the clerk of the court. But you go to the court administrator and you ask him to assign a room where you can meet as a grand juror. Because what will that do? That will give you credibility. If you're actually meeting in the court building, so to rebuild the strength of the grand jury, I think we should do that. Okay? How about asking for 25 right here? I think you can probably get Yeah. Here. Well, but you need to have, you need to have, select among yourselves, a grand jury, you know, who you're going to put on. You want whoever you trust. Okay? You want to pick your best people because this is going to be a real delicate area. And then I would suggest that the very first case you ever take on, and you produce what's called a presentment. That's, that's, that's like an indictment, but it originates from within the jury instead of the DA presenting it to you, okay? You make up a presentment, but the very first case that you should take on should be one of those gut cases that you know in your heart what the right answer is to begin with, and the public will know. You pick a case like that where there's no question about what it's all about. And it's obvious that they deserve to be prosecuted. And it's difficult, and you make your press releases. We, the grand jury, have our make a present because this guy did something really, really bad. And you limit it to that. Once you get your strength in, then you can get to the cases that require more discretion, like income tax and so on, you know. Well, have you talked to Ron Branson, you know, and the judges? I, I have not talked to him, but he and I have communicated, and he knows everything. Yeah, I know, that's a problem. I'm, yeah. I, he, I, he, 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 yeah. I offered to explain it. I offered to meet him. He's in the L.A. area. I offered to meet him. He turns it down. He, he simply tells me I'm wrong, and he's lost total faith in the system. He doesn't, he, he's bound up in his emotions. That's the way I perceive him. Yeah, so, you know, he's got a cause, but I keep telling him, I've looked at his, uh, his jail for judges proposal, and I, if I were a judge, I'd love it, because there's so many holes in it, you know, and uh, he's not going to get anywhere with that. I mean, it's a way of, you know, somebody throws a punch at you, if you can absorb it with a pillow, he still thinks he's punching you, but... You know, and, and to me, that jail for judges proposal is like a pillow. And the, the judges, well, I wouldn't object to it. Hey. So, do you live here in L.A. County or Orange County? Orange. Okay. So, but you can still help us organize a uh, grand jury here in L.A. County. Well, anybody can tell anybody anything. Right. So, <laughs> you, know, you got a question. If I have an answer, I'll give it to you. You said we should do this. Uh, so you help well, it's my suggestion, yeah. Would you help us organize a grand jury here in the county? Well, sure. You know, but look, look, there's no magic here. Read, read Article 61 of Magna Carta. It's all right there. Mm -hmm. It's also Article 52. There's some more information. But 61 is the key one. Have it's, you organized one in the Orange County? We haven't done it yet. Okay. I talk to people about it, but nobody moves on it. You have to have 25 people who are committed. Well, that's one. <laughs> so you know, get the district attorney down there that's uh, uh, Look, fraud and making all kinds of waves. Uh, well, if you have the evidence then, and you've got good, hard, solid evidence, then produce the, the presentment. But don't just willy-nilly. I mean, organize yourself and, and take the proper steps. Don't let them know that's why you're going to meet. You're a grand jury. You're forming... Your proceedings are secret, right. and you want a room to meet. And now that's going to be your first battle, and he's going to say no. And now you're going to have to sue him so that he gives you what he should. Because you're a grand jury, you can order him. <laughs> okay? That's exciting. Ultimately. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I moved a long time ago. Now, you're not going to testify, right? You got a question? Okay. Uh -huh. I knew somebody a long time. He passed away. His name was Steve Cannon. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. Do you recall that? Yeah. He had his own common law court. Yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah, but his approach was is that you couldn't be sovereign unless you got certification from the community. That's not true sovereignty. Well, and, and, and when we had a case for him to handle, he bailed out. Well, I was in court. He was supposedly uh, going down there 
uh, to back up a, a friend who had gotten a ticket. Yes, that's, I think I know that case. That's the one he bailed out on. And the judge, uh, he mentioned something in the court. Mm -hmm. He was a judge. Mm -hmm. And after that, his home was raided. Oh, sure. Well, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna set yourself up with a like a lightning rod, you're gonna be hit by lightning, <laughs> right? Well, he but got, he got hit by lightning. Yeah, but you know, the, I, I, he, I acknowledge that he did you know some good work and he had some good ideas. But the minute I, when I inquired of him, he specifically in his literature said that you could you had to get. The certification from the community. You could not have sovereignty unless it was recognized by the community you were in. And that's not sovereignty. <clears throat> You're a sovereign because you say you are. Yeah, you, you don't need permission to be your own king. Yes, sir. Okay, I guess, is that it? We run out of tape? Okay. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Stephen, and thank you on behalf of Wendy and myself for attending the forum tonight. It was a long and exciting evening. Remember, 385-4003, call that recorded message and find up upcoming events. One more time, let's have a round of applause for Bill Thornton.